Hi everyone, welcome to All Things Presh. I'm Precious and this is going to be my YouTube channel about my pharmacy journey and how I got accepted into a top 20 university. So today I'm going to be talking to you all a little bit about my application process, the PCAT, FarmCast, letters of recommendation, and basically all that good stuff. So to begin with, like I said earlier, I did get accepted into a top 20 school and for me, I think it would have been really helpful if I had someone giving me some advice and tips on exactly what the application process was like. So that's part of why I'm making this channel. So I'm still currently a senior and undergrad right now and I think it's really important when you're going into pharmacy school to make the decision of if you want to do the traditional four-year bachelor's degree or if you just want to do the two to three year option, which is when you just do your prerequisites and then you apply to pharmacy school after that. For me, it was a personal preference to go ahead and get my bachelor's degree. So I decided to get my bachelor's in public health and minor in biochemistry. And I think that really helped me a lot. I think my minor in biochemistry helped me a lot with getting those prerequisite classes done for pharmacy school without having to major in something like chemistry. So to begin with, I don't think it's ever too early to start making the steps towards applying for pharmacy school. For me, this personally started while I was still in high school. When I was in high school, I knew that pharmacy was something I wanted to pursue. So for me, this looked like taking a lot of dual enrollment credits and AP courses. So luckily, by the time I got into undergrad, I was able to go ahead and not have any math classes and get one or two science classes out of the way and I got an English class out of the way too, so that was pretty helpful for me. So unfortunately, every school has different requirements for pharmacy school, and I think it really depends on the school you're applying to. So I think that's why it's important to do a lot of research on what schools you want to apply to, to see if you do need a bachelor's degree or not. Like I said earlier, it really just depends on the school you're applying to. The school I personally applied to, I didn't need my bachelor's degree, but it was something I wanted to go ahead and do, so I made the decision to end up getting my bachelor's degree. In terms of the PCAT, the PCAT is a pharmacy college admissions test, and that's what's going to help you get into pharmacy school, and it's the entrance exam that you're going to take in order to apply to pharmacy school. So. For the PCAT, there's five sections. There's biology, chemistry, math, reading, and writing. And you don't necessarily have to buy a bunch of excessive studying materials. For me, I primarily use two main study materials, and those were Kaplan and Dr. Collins. And personally, for me, I found that Kaplan was really helpful for the biology section and I use Dr. Collins for the chemistry and math sections. I personally was always a math person, so I didn't have to spend as much time studying for the math section, and I also did have to take the PCAT twice, so I can make another video on what my PCAT experience was like, but I did find Dr. Collins to be really helpful for the chemistry section. In terms of the reading section, I would definitely say don't blow off the reading section because that ends up being a section that a lot of people do poorly on because they underestimate it, and I will say that the reading ch section is a bit challenging, so I would definitely still put effort into studying for the reading section. And in terms of the writing section, um, you don't get your writing score that day, but for the writing section, I would recommend just doing the prompts on Kaplan and Dr. Collins. And I would also recommend a huge thing that really helped me and studying for the PCAT was, I would say, maybe a month or so before you actually take the PCAT exam, I think you should purchase the piercing practice exams because those give you a really good gauge of where you're going to score for the PCAT. For me, how I scored on the Pearson exam, that's basically how I ended up scoring on the actual PCAT. So I think that was a really good indicator of how well you do on the PCAT. So in terms of applying for pharmacy school through FarmCast, you're going to use FarmCast, which is the website you use to apply to pharmacy school. And for me, I decided to do early decisions. So I ended up submitting my application in early September. 
I think it's really important to give yourself enough time to apply to pharmacy school because the application process can take a couple months so I personally think it's just really important to not have to rush through it and to just give yourself as much time as possible. When Formcast opens, the first thing I would recommend is working on the transcript entry and for this you're going to need the official transcripts of every school that you got college credit for. So as I mentioned earlier, I did do dual enrollment in high school so I had to request an official transcript from the community college where I obtained dual enrollment and I also had to request an official transcript from the school that I'm currently attending. I don't think it takes as long but I think it's really important to be precise when you're entering the classes in because unfortunately once you finish entering your transcript in, if you make a mistake, Farmcast will send you back your transcript entry and you'll have to redo it. I know there's also the option of paying someone to enter in the classes that you took for you on the transcript entry portion but I personally went ahead and just did it by myself and I didn't have any issues. The next thing I would recommend with Farmcast is getting an early start on who you want to have write you your letters of recommendation. For me, I knew when Farmcast was opening so I personally did ask my recommenders about two to three months prior to when Farmcast even opened just to give them enough time and an idea of when I was planning to submit my application and I think it's really important to get ahead on those letters of recommendation because I know at times it can hinder you from being able to submit your application. And in terms of recommenders, I know it's really controversial. Some people say that you need to have a pharmacist write you your letter. Others say that you need to have an instructor of some sort. For me personally, I went with one pharmacist that was like a mentor to me that I had known for a really long time. And I also went with an instructor that I had TA'd under slash preceptored under. and. She was able to advocate advocate for me because she knew my work ethic in terms of learning and helping others. And I also went with two supervisors that weren't pharmacy related that I had just worked under for a really long time. And in terms of submitting your application for Farmcast, I can make a separate video specifically about Farmcast and more things to expect. But I think in terms of submitting your application, when you're requesting the letters from your recommender, I think it's really important to give them enough time and also to put an earlier date that you recommend they submit it by just because it can end up hindering you from being able to submit the application. So since I did early decision, I plan to submit my application about two to three weeks before the early decision deadline. So I gave my recommenders a deadline date of about three weeks before the early decision deadline so that I would have enough time to submit. And also another thing that I learned while applying this cycle that I hadn't really learned from previous people who had applied to pharmacy school was that your application does have to be verified first before it's sent to the school that you want to apply to. So that's also why I would recommend submitting your application about two to three weeks before the deadline because the verification process can take anywhere from one day to two to three weeks. So I think it's really important to give yourself enough time, especially if you do do the early decision deadline. I don't know if early decision will still be around once this video is uploaded, but for me, early decision was in early September and I submitted my application, I think the last week of August or the second to last week of August. And then once my application was verified, it took about three days for my application to be verified. And once it was verified, I heard back from the pharmacy school that I applied to the very next day. And from there, we went about scheduling the interview. And I think that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching my channel. I'll see you all in the next video. If you have any questions, you can email me at askpressy at gmail.com. I'll put everything in the description and you can also follow me on Instagram at all things press and yeah that's the end of this video thank you all for watching